Yes, sir? Boots Malone? We'll find him. Yes, sir. Right away. Harry, have you seen Boots Malone around? He's living on Poverty Row. Stable 22. How do you like that? A year ago, they'd be calling him at the Ritz. Hey, preacher. Take a message for Boots Malone. Have you tried calling his hotel? Who are you kidding? He's bunking in your tech room. Tell him the racing secretary wants to see him. Come along, Mother. Now be a lady, Mother. Boots, secretary's got a call out for you. Williams, what does he want? <laughs> Maybe it's good news for a change. Oh, preacher. Can you spare a five? I'd like to get a haircut. I wish I had it. After Mother wins a race, they can. Forget it. Forget it. Want me to go in with you? What for? Tip Malone, and a thousand for you besides for the information. You told me the horse was going. You're a liar. Not the way he ran. You needed dough, so you decided to gamble with my money. And not a word from you in six months. No thanks or anything. <laughs> bad as that, huh? As bad as that. If you ever get up off that floor again, you owe me a grand. Oh, hello, Boots. Glad to see you. Gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Williams. Long time since you've been in here, Malone. I'll make book. It seems longer to me. Let me show you something. Earl West at the track again. Looks right, doesn't it? Very nice. Opening day will be exactly two years since he was killed. Two years shy a week. Yes. Well, uh, what I wanted to see you about, Malone, you'll be at the dedication, of course. We thought you might like to say a few words. Me? Who cares what Earl West agent has to say? The public doesn't even know characters like me exist. In any case, Malone, we think a few words from you would be very appropriate. Like, ladies and gentlemen, when Earl West got kicked in the head rounding the clubhouse turn, I lost the best meal ticket a jockey agent ever had. We'd have had a tough streak. You'll find another boy. What about that stash Clements? He showed a lot of promise. Yeah, with a knife and fork. He ate his way out of the saddle. Well... Can we plan on you Saturday? Will Westwood will be there? Of course. We're flying her in specially. Queen for a day, huh? I hear she's flat broke. Really? I didn't know that. She needs a job. Any job at all. Well, she'll have a job, even if we have to make one. What time did you say Saturday? 12.30. Thanks, I'll be there. One! Number one! Three. Number three. Malone. I hear you're looking for a boy. How'd you like to handle my book? When'd you get out of the hospital, Andy? Well, oh, I've been out a couple of months. Been a galloping horse ever since. I'm all legged up and ready to ride. How are the glimmers? I'm in the best shape of my life. Read that. Blind man's bluff on a racehorse. All right, you know everything. Listen, Andy, when the axe falls, it falls. Ground yourself. Get another job. The racetrack's slow poison. Walk away from it while you can. Why don't you? Hi, preacher. What's a good word? Hi, Stash. Hey, tell Boots I'll meet him tonight at the Greasy Spoon. Yes, 
so starved I already ordered. Go ahead, take anything. Take a steak. I do against my month's wages. You got to eat. Here. Seven fish. And I kind of what I owe you. Keep two and pay your own check. You know the whitehead three-year-old I've been exercising? He's a world bidder. I got the orders this morning to let him roll. But I didn't. Hey, bud. That ketchup costs 16 cents a bottle. That's where they dock every cent. Boots coming out of the gate, I had this horse bent double. Guzzling him to death, but I can't hold him, and we still finish with the pack. And when I can't hold What's him... What's the mag's name? White Cargo. White Cargo. I remember that pig. Whitehead imported him from Kentucky. Uh-huh. They got any idea how good he is? With me on his back for the last two months? Don't be silly. Keep him locked up. We may cash a bet. Give me the blue plate special on a clean plate. Hundred dollar bill. That's all I've got, sir. What's the idea? You eat 60 cents worth and pay with this. I tried to change it, mister, but... But you couldn't find a sucker. Where'd you get it? I can assure you it's mine. Where are you from? The track. The... What are you up to? Is this bill good? I... I think it is. You think it is? All right, I'll tell you what. I'll take it to the bank in the morning. You come back tomorrow, and if it's good, you pick up your change. And if it isn't, what are you trying to pull? He comes back tomorrow, you'll be in Pomona. This joint's on wheels. Yeah, this will pay for the boy. Come on, let's get out of this crumpet wagon. Thanks, mister. Thanks a lot. Listen, Sonny. You ought to know better than to go around flashing a C-note. Makes people jittery. First thing you know, some sharp guy will beat you for it. Yes, sir. Uh, now, if you don't mind, sir. May I please have it back? I got it. Oh, so I have. There you are, son. Thanks again. Uh, I'm just a stranger around here, mister. Could you direct me to a nice place to stay? You mean you got no place to sleep? Come along with us. Could I? You better be swell. How's it going, Mac? Where do you think you're going? It's okay, he's with us. Say, are you hot? No, I'm very comfortable. I mean, is anybody after you? No, nobody's after me. Where do you come from? What's your name? How old are you? Leave him alone. Is he asking you any questions? What are you asking him questions for? That's his business. You're tired, son. Been on the road all day? Yes, sir. Well, you better turn in. We get up early around here. Take that cot. Is it all right if I use that? You don't have to use a hanger. Just throw your stuff anywhere. to brush your teeth? Basin? Oh, oh, that. It's outside. I don't have to put my pants back on. Oh, why bother, pal? Hey, use my robe. Thanks. You can get lost out there, so listen. Go down this row, way down past the commissary until you get the big light. Then turn left one bar and it's on the right. Got it? I think so. don't trust us. Where'd you think you were going with that robe gag? You steered me wrong, talking to him like he's a choir boy. Maybe he is. Can't you see he was raised on certified milk? Hey, a medal. 
First prize horsemanship, 14-year-old class. <laughs> you must have won it on a merry-go-round. Kids, they're all the same. A fast two-week fling at the world. If it isn't a circus, it's a racetrack. If he was a little older, it'd be the Marines. I'm sorry, Mr. Goat. I didn't have to go way down to the big light. There's another bathroom right around the corner. There is? Well, that's the one we're certainly going to use from now on. You know, son, uh, you told that man in the wagon a lie. You're not from the track. Well, it wasn't exactly... That is, it wouldn't have been a lie tomorrow. That wasn't nice. You see, I like horses. I always have. I was planning to find work around the track. That's fine. But first, you got to learn one thing. Around the racetrack, you're always on the level. Yes, sir. I'll remember that. And another thing. You're ready for bed. But how about that $100 bill? Is it ready for bed? Suppose some dishonest person should get in here. Accidentally. Where's the first place they'd look for your money? Under the pillow? Right. So what do you do? You play it smart. They came to dust you off. So don't disappoint them. Leave them a little loot. A buck is plenty. Follow this closely. First, we fold the hundred in half. Then again. Then once again. A nice, neat little patch. Now comes the important part. Where do we put it? Very simple. We tuck it way down in your sock. Where you're ticklish. Anybody touches you, you wake up like a shot. Open my hand. Oh, what's wrong? You're a dirty thief, mister. I dare you to open that hand. Well, what are you talking about? Gee, sir. This is awful. So that's what you thought. I take you out of the clutches of a gorilla in an eating joint. You got no place to sleep. I bring you home, give you my bed. And you got the sand to sit there and call me a dirty thief? Now, listen, you give me back my buck and get out of here. Honestly, mister, this has never happened to me before. And I thought you were a decent sort. I should have known better. Well, you don't know the first thing about comradeship. Do you think if I had $100, we'd be sleeping in a dump like this? Well, where would we be sleeping? I think I'll have breakfast in bed. Excuse me, but I couldn't sleep. I just had to apologize again. Well, I told you to forget it, kid. We all make mistakes. Could happen to anybody. Now get some shut eye. Good night. Good night. Pajamas. I ran away from home with nothing but a pocket full of marbles. There were 12 of us. Rough. My folks didn't miss me till four years later when I sent them a postal card. Say, Boots. Where do you suppose that little satchel comes from? What do I care? I got problems of my own. Turn out the light. I hope he don't get homesick before his money runs out. Turn out the light. Is it all right if I pay the check? Sure, pal, if you want to. Thanks. And that was his last race. I've been asked about it many times. I'm asked if he had to take the chance he did. Well, if you knew Earl West, you know the answer. He was deep through the heart. Courage was nothing I nor anybody could teach him. And no part of it could be taken away. It was in his breeding. That's how he was born. That's how he had to die. And that's what made him champ.
Mr. Williams with just wonderful boots. You know I hate to ask. But he offered me the job. I start work Monday. Nice fellow, Williams. Family man. And thanks, Boots. Not for the speech you made. For the one you didn't make. I don't get you, Jenny. I knew where I was walking out on you. A week before he was killed, he signed that Milford Stables contract. Well, number one rider for Milford. Barn full of steak horses. Even bigger money guaranteed. Couldn't blame him. His chance came along. Didn't happen to include me. It was wrong, Boots. You made him. And there's such a thing as loyalty. Not on the racetrack. If that's what I was counting on, that was my mistake. Goodbye, Jenny. I guess in a lot of ways, a jockey's agent is as important as anybody at the track. Picking the best mounts, he'd have to know all about horses. <laughs> Mr. Malone, he even taught Earl West how to ride. Excuse me, Mr. Malone. Who else did you have besides Earl West? Who else? Nobody. Why? An agent's only allowed to handle one top jock at a time. That's a track rule. Why? Look, you're a bright boy. Suppose he handled three, and all in the same race. Why, he could cook something up right in a family. Now, we wouldn't want anything like that to happen. But I should think after Earl West, any one of the good riders would want Mr. Malone to handle him. Yeah, yeah, great. Except the good ones are all sewed up with contracts. Now, if you happen to stumble on Johnny Longdon's twin brother, be sure and let Mr. Malone know. Now, tie off, kid. We're concentrating. Jim. Excuse me, Mr. Malone. Not to boast or anything, but I ride so myself. A ribbon, huh? 36. Oh, terrific. Go out and get me a ham sandwich, will you, pal? It included jumping and everything, Mr. Malone. I don't say I'm good enough yet for real races, but with somebody like you teaching me... Look, kid, you want to wind up a statue? Forget it. Couldn't you just try me out with a few lessons? I learned quickly. I won the school cup for highest aptitude in new projects. Anyway, uh, I wouldn't expect you fellas to do it for nothing. I'd be glad to pay, Mr. Malone. It would be like tuition. So <laughs> we don't have to be embarrassed about money. Because I've got another hundred dollars. Hold it. Lessons never did anybody any good, kid. Unless you got talent. Take off your shirt. Yes, sir. Stick out your chest. All right, muscle up. Oh, look at that build. Like a totem pole. Who'd have thought it? All right, up you go. Let's see how you sit on a horse. Not bad, not bad. Use the whip. Kid, you're a natural. I'll have you on a horse in no time. No deal. that load, Mr. Malone? What do you think that load weighed, Preacher? A good 50 pounds. Feel my muscle. After only a week. Here, test them. Great, didn't I tell you? How soon do you think I'll be ready to get on a horse? Oh, any day now. Just keep shoveling, kid. Get those muscles toned up. That's a nice lad, Boots. But not one of us. When he's got a nose full, he'll go the way he came. So you made up your mind. You're taken off. Before I toss myself on that pile. But the meat's hardly started. There must be some boy on the grounds. 
Sure, plenty of boys. They're coming at me in my sleep. Jocks half blind. Jocks with kidney trouble who'd get dizzy on a rocking horse. Jocks with steel collarbones who couldn't whip a rug. Drunks, cripples, boneheads, has-beens. There isn't even an apprentice boy around who knows which end of a horse to feed. Where would you be heading, Boots? Back to the bull rings, half milers, state fairs. Maybe I'll get lucky again and dig a sprout out of the ground like I found Earl. There's a hitch going south at the end of the week. Is the mare ready to roll? Mother's been waiting. How's Paul Revere? Take her three-eighths dash around the clubhouse turn. But don't rush her. Just give Mother her head and she'll rate herself. She knows how fast she wants to go. Uh, how long have you had the mayor preacher? Uh, close to 11 years now. Mother's got quite a bit of mileage on her. I'll take off one day. Well, she goes right along paying the feed bills for both of us. Jeez, look at him ride. Who's that? Just Eddie Koch, one of the best riders in the country. Who handles Koch? 20% Brady. The fellow behind the cigar. Bet Mr. Malone could handle him better. Hello, Eddie. How's it going? You mean, am I still satisfied with Brady? Give up, Malone. You wouldn't try to submarine a brother agent, would you, Malone? Bet Mother can beat almost anything on four legs. Well, hardly, lad. She's cheap, but she's honest. In a $2,000 claiming race, she holds her own. What's a claiming race, preacher? Well, that's a race where every horse in it is up for sale. That means any other owner can put a bid in for your horse and take it. Why do they have races like that? Well, they're for the cheaper horses. In that kind of race, you've got to be sure the horses are evenly matched. Now, the thing you've got to stop is a fellow with a real good horse putting him in with the poor ones just to grab the purse. He won't do it if he's got to risk having his good horse claimed right out from under him at the same price as the rest of them. That's the man, Mr. Whitehead. Preacher Cole's horse. I've been clocking her steady. And she's entered tomorrow? In the eighth, but only for the air, what we call a tightener. And with that race under her belt, watch out. Within a week, she's ready to win. And you're suggesting I claim her? Figure it out, Mr. Whitehead. With the kind of money you bet, why guess what day the horse is gone? For $2,000, you own the animal. You pick the day. Pretty old horse to be claiming. What's the difference? She's sound. It's as sweet a spot to cash a bet as I've seen in a long time. What's that business slogan of yours, Mr. Whitehead? You mean, I sell everything in the pig but the grunt? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, we got one in our business, too. Better to cash a bet than win a purse. Uncle Sam isn't your partner. You can still have a bet on the horse and not go to all that trouble. Besides, there's an understanding around the tracks. A man with one horse, you don't claim it. You don't put him out of business. Who are you training for, Beckett? Me or the preacher Coles? Put the claim in.
seen Mr. Malone. No. Old timer, I brought mothers. Beckett. Have you gone off your rocker? Put that gun away! Preacher went in there with a horse pistol. You did it to win a dirty bet for a greedy slob. Hand over the iron, Preacher. Out of my way. What's going on here? What's this about a gun? Somebody said the old man had a gun. You got touted, Frank. This is just a friendly scam us between neighbors. Tell him, Beckett. That's all. Nothing to it. I... I lost my head. I'm sorry. All right, let's go home. Beat it, everybody. Get lost. I'm quitting. Everybody wouldn't for Whitehead ought to quit. All you quit is eating, unless you ring the necks of those ducks in the infield. Whitehead will never know you're gone. Ah. What happened to the cannon? I've got the cannon. Shouldn't Preacher be back by now? No, he's cooling himself out. He'll show up. Oh, this is just crazy. Here, Mr. Whitehead's got so many horses, he's even selling some. Now, why does he go and take Preacher's? Don't you ever stop asking questions? Well, we get even with Mr. Whitehead. How? Well, uh, some way. Justice catches up. There's only one way. If we could just figure how to get him another horse. Yeah, that'd be nice. I think I'll take a walk. Oh, and remember, Mr. Malone, you don't have to go way down by that big light. There's that one just around the... wind crazy. Ever since that touting clocker got him in tow, he's soaking up the dirty tricks like a pawnbroker. Anything to win a bet. So the butcher wants to learn the angles, huh? How about you and me teaching him a few, the hard way? How many whitehead lemons go into that dispersal sale? Eighteen. We make the final selection in the morning. Why? How about seventeen lemons and one orange? One orange for us. You're crazy. Nobody's asking you to throw in a stakes winner. Nothing as raw-jawed as that. Just a fair horse that isn't coming along in training. But a few of the boys can buy in cheap for poor old preacher. I can't get away with anything like that. I just got this job. I want to keep it. How long do you think it's going to last? You said so yourself. The guys win crazy. He fired three trainers in less than a year. And the last one he bounced couldn't even get a letter of recommendation. I can't do it, Malone. Who are you loyal to, Beckett? A slaughterhouse? Before Whitehead's through with you, take your eye out and use it for a grape. Now sober up. It'll never work. What horse? Or have you got that figured out, too? This one. White cargo? Just a fair horse that isn't coming along. But could, I know. That buddy of yours, Stash. You see, you didn't know it, so Whitehead doesn't. Not even the touting clocker. We're halfway home. But the other half is tougher. How do I get Whitehead to give up on that horse? He paid a fortune for him. Well, it takes one more little step. You almost caught some lead in your skull today, Beckett. Let's put the right kind of lead where it'll do some good.
There's one you can dump. Which one? Pulling up the rear. White cargo. Notice that leg at you, Mr. Whitehead. Up and down instead of forward. Wasted motion. Well, I paid 25000 for that horse as a yearling. He's what we call a climber. Never amount to anything. He's well bred enough. But your records show he didn't stand training last year. Well, that settles it. I'm not feeding another horse that can't pay its own way. Put him in the sale. Just as you say, Mr. Whitehead. Pretty sure the goose is in the oven. Hey, Goofy! Hi, quarter horse. Well, what's the good word? Barn 22 tonight. Goose is in the oven. Bring the bankroll. I had enough lead on that right front foot. The horse looked like he was running upstairs. But we're not home yet. No telling what price he'll bring at the sale. Say, you really think we got a chance to buy him boots? What about Whitehead's friends? Don't worry about him. Whitehead will tip his friends off. What we got to worry about is somebody around the track getting snoopy nosed. So spread the word. White cargo is an 18-carat slow ball. What do you have left out of the claiming money? 1100 after the bills were paid. Now, the horse will be in Preacher's name, and he trains him. Agreed? Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. sure. All right. Now, remember, what you put up is your share. Dig deep, everybody. <laughs> 70 fish. Goofy Gordon, 70. Here's my watch. It's worth 200. What will it soak for on a pawn ticket? Oh, uh, uh, t t uh, 20. Quarter horse Henry, 20. Put me down for 50. You still got that counterfeit rag. How much cash? Cash? I got a sawbuck. Louis the Louse, 10 dollars. 15. Foxy Farrell, 15. Hancock, 12. 30. Spaniard? I bid eighty thousand dollars. Eighty thousand dollars. I bid on ninety. I bid eighty now. Who bid ninety? Ninety thousand. Ninety thousand dollars. Take another hundred. I bid ninety thousand dollars now. One hundred thousand dollars. Did say even on anybody give a hundred? One hundred. Yes, a hundred thousand dollars is bid now. Ten. I bid one hundred thousand now. Ten. Ladies and gentlemen, very seldom is a horse of this caliber ever offered for public sale. Winner of the Saratoga Special, the Derby Trial. Do I hear a hundred and ten? I bid one hundred thousand dollars. Be one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Are you all through? One hundred thousand dollars. Any more? Time's up. I sold him one hundred thousand dollars to the Triple X Stables. Next number, number forty-eight. What do we have here? Number forty-eight on your catalog, white cargo, from the consignment of Mr. Howard Whitehead. This three-year-old gelding of distinguished bloodlines, unraced but at the present time in training and in sound condition. How much is in the pool, Boots? 1400 Do I hear a bid? Howard, darling? Do I hear a bid? $200. $200? Insult to the fine horse flesh. $500. $500, thank you, sir. $500 is bid. $600. Yes, yeah, $600 is bid. $1,000. $1,000 is bid. I never figured on a drunk in the crowd. Thousand and fifty. A thousand and fifty dollars is bid. Any more? I ain't got one thousand and fifty over here. Hold on. Thirteen fifty. Thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you. Any more? Now fourteen hundred. Fourteen hundred. Yes, fourteen hundred dollars. Now fifty. Fourteen hundred and fifty. <laughs> fourteen hundred and fifty is bid. Now fifteen hundred. I am bid fourteen fifty now. Fifteen hundred dollars. Did say to even anybody to get fifteen hundred? Are you all through? Fourteen hundred and fifty dollars. All done. Fifteen hundred. Yes, fifteen hundred dollars. Thank you. Any more? Sold him fifteen hundred. Honestly, Mr. Malone, on my word of honor, it's the last one. <laughs> Cold as ice. He's sound as a bell of brass. You could have him up to his race in six weeks. Look, Preacher, you can't train the horse here. Not under Whitehead's nose. We don't want to bury Beckett. Yeah. Well, I've been thinking, Boots. You're aiming south. Why don't we all go together? I can trade him on a half-miler. Good idea. That's what we'll do. Oh, Preacher, about the kid. Uh, you know, he's just goofy enough to want to go along, and that's out of the question. Is it? Well, <laughs> we don't even know who he is. Why get involved? It's going to be rough down there, and we're crowded anyway. 
Now somebody's got to tell him it's a kiss-off. Look, preacher, he likes you. You tell him. Start him on his way home, but, but do it nice, huh? guys before this is a private party for Mr. Williams, the racing secretary. Now get on your bicycle and start pedaling, huh? Oh, uh, hello, oh, Mr. Uh, Williams. Well, the least the guest of honor can do is put in an appearance. Sure, come in. Have some chicken. It's mighty tempting. Sit down, Williams. Sit down. Dropped in to tell you I'm sorry you're leaving us, preacher. But you know what's best for yourself. Best of racing luck with your new horse. Oh, th thanks, Williams. Remember, any time you decide to come back to Dillington, we'll find stall space for you somehow. He may take you up on that, Williams. Preacher tells me he'll have that horse back here and running. Getaway week. Well, let's hope he fools all of us. <laughs> my, my, this chicken is delicious. Never tasted anything quite like it. But it's a new kind, Mr. Uh, Williams. All dark meat. They are crossbreeding them with ducks. <laughs> hey, where did the kid think he's going? Didn't you tell him? No, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. But don't ask me. I'm not washing any dirty laundry. All right, I'll tell him myself. Now, listen, kid, we, uh... I, uh... What's the matter? Anything wrong? I'm sorry it didn't work out. What didn't? This, uh, this riding business. There for a while, I thought you had possibilities, well, but... Well, how do you know? I haven't even been on a horse. Well, I can tell from a lot of things. Do I have to give you reasons? So we'll be moving on, and you'd better beat it on back home. Your old man must be a pretty lonesome guy by now. I haven't got a father. Well, well, then your mother. Now, won't it be nice to have your mother tuck you in under those downy covers in your own soft bed and kiss you goodnight, huh? Gee, uh, I thought we were getting along swell. Preacher and Stash, you and me, the whole gang of us. Even if I can't ride, I could go along and help. Preacher says I'm doing half a man's work. Now, look, uh... uh Hey, what's your name, anyway? Tommy. Now, look, Tommy, you're a swell kid. I even like you, but enough's enough. If you've had a beef at home, be a man about it. Go back and straighten it out. Okay? Maybe we can drop you off someplace. Okay. But fork over that money. What money? For the tuition and my share of the horse. Now, listen, I haven't got the dough. You know I can't pay you right now. You pay or I'm in. And I'm going. All right, Big Bridges. Looks like you're going. Come on. What happened, Boots? He muscled me. Let's get this rattling jar moving. Bye, preacher. Bye, Brian. Bye, gang. Come on, guys. See you later. That horse is cut up more ways than a boarding house pie.
Unload the horse. She'll make it. White Carver can use a little walking. Preacher. A jockey learn to take orders. I'll tell you when to get on a horse. find the boy who's going to ride white cargo. Get him acquainted with the horse. Sort of train him along together. Let's quit kidding, fellas. What we're looking for is walking around right now, rye brows. When that kid came riding over the hill, I want to tell you, Oil West couldn't have done no better. Well, am I crazy or something? Yeah, it was quite a ride. Well, what's stopping you? Guarantee your boots you start training him like you train me in a month his own mother won't know him. What about that mother? What about it? Yeah, my guess is right, not this old lady. In fact, somebody's got to be looking for him right now. So what? Right now we need a boy. And another thing, he's got to be 16 to ride, and he isn't there by at least a year. He's 16. If you don't believe me, I'll print your bite certificate. What do you got to lose? You find another kid, you dump him. But till then, put him in training. It don't cost nothing. See what he's got. All right, if you feel that strong about the kid, go ahead. Put him on the scales. Me? You're the one that's doing all the talking. Balance yourself on his widders. That's where he don't feel your weight so much. See? Now, come here. Here's the saddle. Surprised, huh? Nothing to it. Weighs 32 ounces. Just enough to hang the stirrups from. Be right back, Stash. Where are you going? To put the saddle on the horse. There's your horse. Stash, fasten those reins on the door. Hand me the girth. All right, up you go.
What are you lowering the stirrup for? What do you think you're doing? Riding to the hounds? But Colonel Summers always... Summers? Who's he? The headmaster at school. He was in the United States Cavalry. He should have stayed in the infantry. Forget anything he or anybody else ever told you about riding. That's where the right iron belongs. They're not even. This one's too high. Look, a racetrack isn't a straightaway. It's got turns. That's why you ride, AC Doocy. One short, one long. Otherwise, what do you think could happen to you going full clip into those turns? What are those toes down for? Keep them cocked. If your horse decides to stop, you got something to brace against. Give me the reins. Remember, these horses don't neck rein like a cow pony. Your hands tell them what to do. You want to go to the right? Pull to the right. You want to go to the left? Pull to the left. And get one thing in your head. A racehorse is a dumb brute. The intelligence has been bred out of him. All he respects is your strength. All right. Take a half cross. That's it. Keep your left hand open. What for? Coming out of the gate, that hand's gonna be full of mane. That leaves your right hand free to use the whip. Once you got him rolling, take your full cross. Full cross? Full cross, both hands. That's for rating him. Half cross for breaking out of the gate. Full cross, half cross. Full cross, half cross. Try it. Full cross, half cross. Full cross, half cross. Good. Now eat it, drink it, and dream it until you can do it in your sleep. Start practicing. Say, Mr. Malone, I don't like to keep asking, but could you give me an idea just when I'll be able to get on a horse? Sure, I'll give you a good idea. When you can do this. Is that all? Heck, I'll do that right now. <laughs> I'd never get on a horse. But, Mr. Malone, I thought you meant white cargo. You crawl before you walk. Give me that leg. Measure the reins off and tie your knot to his neck length. Keister down. You're setting up like a Central Park policeman. Forward a little, on the withers. You tire a horse in three blocks. These beasts don't push themselves with their hind legs. They pull themselves forward with their front legs. So get up there with them, or you can help them. What did I tell you about those toes? Up, keep them cocked. Those are your emergency brakes. When you want to stop some iron jawed cement headed ox, take a full cross and set it into him. Let's do it together. Now! This is where most races are won or lost, right here in the Iron Monster. And the trick is to get out first. And that isn't easy, because all the other jockeys got the same idea. But if you know your business, you can break on top most of the time. Now get yourself set. What are you doing? Those feet. My toes are cocked. You're not gonna stop the horse, stupid. You're gonna start him. Now get those legs way back, ready to throw yourself with him. Or you wind up on your caboose. You're going from a dead stop to 40 miles an hour in two jumps. 
What'd you win that aptitude prize for? Peeling bananas? Even a monkey can do that. What about that open hand? Don't you remember anything? Lock it in the main. Now, you're secure front and back. Where are you looking? Straight ahead, at the gate. Let the horse look at the gate. He'll see it open before you do. He's closer to it. Watch the starter. Watch Preacher. When he puts that button behind his back, be ready. You'll be on your way in a hurry. Online? Bell. That's it. Control him with one hand. Go to the whip. No, don't look back. You'll be whipping and the horse will be through the fence. Good. Whip with your left hand. I can! I'm right-handed! What do you think he was squeezing that ball for? You got a left hand now. Use it. How do I switch the whip? Like this. Try it. Bat with your right hand. Change over. You'll find out someday when you're pinched in next to the rail. You'll be forced to whip left-handed to blow the race. I'll remember. Okay, on your stomach. Mr. Malone, where did you ever learn so much? The old country. The part of Ireland I come from. People weren't land poor, they were horse poor. You walk through the stable to get into the parlor. I smelled the hay before I smelled my mother's cooking. How old were you when you came over here? Were you ever married or anything? Put a zipper on it. I'm trying to give you a rub. I only asked him a civil question, and I only expected a civil answer. Yeah, what did you ask him? Just if he was ever married, that's all. Hmm. Was he? Yes, he was married. The prettiest bride I ever saw. Where is she? He lost them both. Her and the newborn in childbirth. How long ago was that? Oh, about 15 years now, I guess. Today. If you're going to write today, you better get your license. Next. How old? 16. Under 18, you need parents' consent. Get it signed. Name? Tommy. Tommy what? Malone. Malone? Junior. Where you been? You know lunch is 11.30. This is a training table. I was applying for my license, Mr. Malone. You what? It's all right. I told them I was 16. All you have to do is sign this. Malone Jr. Who told you to use that name? Well, I had to give some name, and Malone's a pretty good name, Mr. Malone. I can go back and change it. They give you credit for knowing your own name. Time's done. Sit down and eat. I don't mind, Mr. Malone. If you don't mind... And stop calling me Mr. Malone. Okay. Uh... Call me Boots. Okay, Boots. Well, what do you know? A papa in three minutes flat without a wedding.
you put him outside in a sleeping bag, huh? A little kid on a raw night like this. He's smaller than me. The bag fits him perfect. He's been sleeping there all the time. From now on, he sleeps in the tent. You take the bag. Did White Cargo work yet? No, he's waiting for you. Me? You want me to? You've been griping about nothing else for the last five weeks. I know, Boots, but honest, I can wait. I'm Up no hurry. Good. Take your instructions from the trainer. Yeah, a break from the quarter pole, work him a half mile with a snug hold. You got a lot of horse under you, lad. Yes, sir. Now watch it, kid. If he pricks his ears, leave just, him alone. You know... You're ready, kid. Don't think about anything. Just ride him. Fifty-three. That shrimp was born with a clock in his head. Boot, you got yourself a boy. Yeah, the kid's coming along. Well, preacher, one tightener, and that horse can head back to Dunnington. Wait a second. You turn that speedball loose with these pigs, he'll run away and hide. Next day, it's in a racing record, and where's our good thing? Who says we turn him loose? He don't run until the first hard rain. Cabbage head smells out loud and his agent with him. Hey, watch that language. one aisle over. The clerk assigned me here. I'm riding tomorrow. Scram, Rob, batch in the mush. You couldn't bat a horse. Not with your left hand, you couldn't. I saw the ride you gave Lady Gentry. You're real leery. for these jocks that push him off the track. You gonna get up? Or you gonna lay there and geek it? Didn't you stop it? It was in the jock's room, I told you. Boots wouldn't let me. Well, I was right again. Whitehead can Beckett. It's in the racing record. Read it. If you want to tamper the kid like a piece of steel, why don't you put his head in the fire and be done with it? Pretty bad, huh? I can see you're in no shape to ride tomorrow. Well, don't worry about it. We can get another boy. Nobody's riding white cargo. Nobody but me. Get that in your head. Hold this beefsteak on your eye. And remind me someday to teach you how to handle your duke. You're as wide open as a barn door. Kid's pretty terrific, huh? Took a lacing like a dock walloper and not a tear out of him. I'm going after the heavy shoes. You'll get to the barn. I'll need your help shoeing white cargo.
saving something for you, kid. Guess what? You know who these belong to? The boots, the pants? I West. Jenny gave them to me when she thought I was gonna fill his shoes. But the boat sail. I ain't gonna make the grade. Send four hamburgers a day, they ruin me. Here. You'll fill them, kid. You'll make the grade. Because you got class. I know that the first night I seen you wearing pajamas. With those steel plates, he'll move in the mud like a deep-sea diver. What story are you giving the kid? What do you want me to tell him? We're stiffing the horse under him? This kid? You know what I mean. He'll be in there trying. Give him an out. At least on the horse is in no shape to win. Tell him nothing. What do you want better than a jockey that's in there trying all the time? Gets him in the right habit. We know where we stand. That doesn't go for this boy. You train the horse. I'll train the jock. Remember one day you asked me what the big secret was between me and Earl West? Well, it's time to tell you. It was a partnership, straight down the line. Nothing ever came between us. We always knew where we stood with each other. No shenanigans. And when the riding started, he was always on his belly. In there trying every race, every inch of the way. I promise, Boots. The track's gooey, but that won't bother you. Just put white cargo in the lead and never look back. Riders up. Just be careful of one thing. Don't hustle this horse too fast. He's liable to run out of gas. Here, huh? Well, maybe you've learned something. Give anybody the right reason and they'll cry. They'll cry their hearts out. <laughs> Will you stop blubbering and dry up? What'd I train, a crybaby or a jock? <laughs> you don't learn anything from winning a race, only from the ones you blow. I told you I was satisfied with the ride. What more do you want? <laughs> this isn't a recognized track. The race didn't count. Today wasn't the day. That isn't it, Boots. I let you down. All of you. I didn't listen. You told me not to hustle the horse too fast. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Start packing everything. I want to be on my way in an hour. Do you hear me? Start packing. Who elected you, Captain? Say, hey, Evans, that horse of yours, Lady Gentry, what price do you expect on her tomorrow? Nine to five? She'll be a favorite again. How would you like five to one for your money and a sure winner? I'd like it. How do I get it? Put a jock on her who never rode a winner. Not that bug boy who rode white cargo. Since when do you believe your eyes are on the racetrack? That horse was a lob. This kid rides like gangbusters. Don't even pay us. Just bet the jock speed. Unpack. We're laying over another day. An owner twisted my arm to let the kid ride tomorrow. Some horse called Lady Gentry. Thinks he's got a sure thing. Yes, sir, a jock nobody ever heard of and a horse that never won a race. We go back to Dunnington with 200 bucks and we empty the mutual and water. Watch your language. To the jock. To the jock. Well, 
the jocks are signing their contracts with their agents. You never asked me, Boots, but I'm ready to sign. Why? Would you take off if I didn't have you on the dotted line? No, gosh, no. I just thought you'd feel better if it was more legal. Contract's just a hunk of paper, kid. Paper wears out. I guess you're right. We don't have to write it down. We'll remember, Boots. We'll just remember. Don't worry about it, Sprout. Nothing's gonna split us out. After all, you're my boy. You know, Boots, I wish you were my father. Hey, I'll catch up with you guys. I gotta say goodbye to a fella. Hey, killer. Ever seen this kid before? Yeah, that's Malone's kid. Where do I find this Malone? Somewhere on Highway 66. They headed north early this morning. You don't need a new radiator. You gotta pull this whole engine apart. How much? 150 in parts. Cash on the barrel head. You'll get your money. Where's the phone? Lunch counter. Start working. Lexington operator. The Lexington Steamship Company. Collect. Option right. right in the safe. That's right. Hello. Yeah, money. Hello. Five across. Right. Yes, sir. Sheep Delhi. Yes, I'll accept it. Five across. Malone, who dug you up? Yeah, buddy. Where? Hello. <laughs> oh. And I'm gonna bail you out, Matson. Both of us. The kind of betting proposition you like. Small investment, boxcar figures. I've had a bad season, Malone. You're not just coming at me for a second helping. Of course not. I've sweated over this one. I'm counting on it to put me back on my feet again. Write this down. White cargo, seventh race, Friday, Dellington. How much is the ante this time? I'll show right in the six. Right. Okay, I'll think about it. Malone's got a firecracker ready to pop. Wiring 500, this Western Union. Hold it. Out at the gate and keep your ears open. The blue coupe been following us for the last 15 miles. The ghost is home. The ghost is home. Hey, Flynn, come on. Yeah? The goose is home. Yeah. Oh, hey. Hey, fellas, the goose is home. Hi. Hi, fellas. Hi, a quarter horse. Glad to see you, fellas. How you feeling? White cargo looks tight as a drum. A stakes horse if I ever seen one. White cargo? Is that third-rate climber going to run against my best three-year-old? Well, maybe not against him, Mr. Whitehead. But according to Friday's entries, he's sure going to run with him. Who's riding for the money, preacher? Malone's new boy. Fits the horse like a glove. The 
got blue coops around asking about the kid. Smells private copper all over. What are we gonna do? Smells so sweet that first night. His mother manufactures her stuff. Perfume. What a business. You put some hopped up stink water in a fancy bottle and. Say, Boots, how mean she with Dodie you think she is? After the first five million, what difference does it make? Pretty clever the way the lad had them thinking he went to Paris and the mother thinking he was in school. Why don't we take this old lady in on a scheme? I don't care how loaded with glue she is. I never seen a dame yet who couldn't use a little extra for her stockings and things. Stop thinking, Boots. Hold on to the lad is out. You don't fool around with a woman like this. I know, I know. Troops will be moving in by morning. Where are you going? To beat that detective to it. I'm going to salvage what I can. He's yours, all right. I've received a dozen calls like this. How can I be sure he's my boy? He's got the kind of eyes that change with the weather. A noisy sleeper. Tugs at his hair when he's tired. A tooth that points at you when he smiles. Yes. Yes, that's Tommy. Just hop a plane and be at the stable gate of Dellington Racetrack at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Ask for... Tommy Malone, Jr. I won't eat more than three eggs for breakfast this morning. I want to weigh in for the race tomorrow at 103, tack and all. Eddie Koch on meatloaf can't make under 114. Gives us an 11 pounds edge. What's the matter with you guys? Aren't you hungry? <clears throat> Tommy Malone, Jr. wanted at the stable gate. Hey, that's me. Now, what do you suppose they want? You won't find out sitting there. You kids finish before I get back. I'll meet you at the barn. That's a little worried, Tommy. Get in the car, dear. My blood poured down the sewer. Wasted on a spoiled, rich runt. I'll miss him, too. It's a fact, son. It was Mr. Malone who turned you in for the $5,000 reward. He wouldn't. He wouldn't do it. And what's more, your friend was in a big rush to do it. Half an hour after our man was attacked outside the racetrack, your mother received the phone call in New York. You're a dirty liar! Tommy! Take it easy, son. You didn't give him your mother's private phone number, did you? Well, then where else did he get it? Lots of ways. I don't know. You get out of here, you, you muck sack. Yes? Yes, have Mr. Malone come right up. I'll ask him myself. I'll talk to him. That's a good idea, Tommy. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to. This is what he's coming for. A check for $5,000. Why not give it to him yourself? Malone. 
Sit down, Mr. Malone. I've been rather curious to meet you. And the way Tommy talks about you, it's been a rather extraordinary attachment. You know, kids, they run off the chin. Knowing Tommy and his love for horses, I can understand that. Being a jockey isn't exactly what I had in mind for Tommy's future. Although I can see how it would be very useful to you. It's a little more than that. We got along. Of course you did. You took the dream of every youngster his age and made it something quite real. But it's preposterous, Mr. Malone. Tommy's going right back to school. And nothing would be accomplished by your ever seeing him again. We'll have no beefs, Mrs. Gibson. He's your property. Property? What do you call it? No boy runs away from a pair of loving arms. Is he any better off? Belonging to you, like a well-trained dog? At least he'd belong to somebody. This isn't getting us anywhere. We both know what you're here for. If you're talking money, it'd help. There won't be any money, Mr. Malone. Under the circumstances, I believe you understand. So Boots's boy is out. There's other jocks, ain't there? Maybe we can get Pearson. Pearson? He'd kill us. We couldn't get better than four to one with him up if the horse had three legs. Four to one? That's no price with our bankroll. Say, Boots, how about Slippery Smith? Boots. Huh? How about Slippery Smith? He knows his way around the track. Forget him. He blows a horse out in the morning, calls ten of his clients, and by noon our good things splashed all over town. Well, Stash can blow out the horse. Slippery don't have to know nothing till the last minute. Till Preacher gives him his instructions in the paddock. I don't care what you tell Slippery Smith in the paddock. It's still a 50-50 chance whether he lets any horse run. Well, and I'm for scratching the horse. We carried the proposition this long, we can carry it a little longer. Ah, you can't scratch. Stewards would never okay us. How did you get here? Train stopped at Dellington. I got off. Oh, what about your old lady? She knows I'm riding tomorrow. Look here, lad. You're speaking the strict truth, aren't you? Sure. I, I just promised my mother I'd be back at school on Monday. You've been out in a night air and only a rope. Come on, get some duds on. I'm all right. You fellas didn't have to worry. Nobody but me was going to ride white cargo. Well, everything settled. We got our jockey. That's great. Good luck, kid. Everything will be hunky dory now. Oh, That's the right kid anyway. Hey, you look sharp in that new fiddle, kid. It's like having a whole family together again. Ain't it, Boots? Just the four of us. Come on, Stash. I feel like having a cup of coffee. I don't care how much money you got, kid. I really like you. Don't you get any funny ideas. I didn't come back on account of you. There's Preacher, Stash, Jenny, Quarter Horse, and the others. After all, I know where we stand. Things got a little tough. You needed some cash. So you turned in the first handy thing. Me. You could have found some other way. You could have sold the horse or... Or robbed a bank. But I was always easy pickings, wasn't I? The first night you had me walking all over the track, looking for a washroom so you could rifle my clothes, and taking my money for riding lessons when you had me shoveling out Preacher's Barn. Well, I'm caught up with you. You don't want any part of me? I've got news for you. I don't want any part of you. After tomorrow, we're through.
And another thing. There was the time you slapped my face. I owe you one back. If I was a little bigger, I'd give it to you right now. I think I will, anyway. It was only you. You know that, don't you? We can be together, Boots. We can find a way. But don't split us out. Don't split us out. Better get some sleep, Tommy. Tomorrow's a big day. Boots! Will you come back with me? What makes you think you're a jockey? Just because you want a two-bit heat down the toolies? This is the Big Apple. You might turn out to be just another morning glory. Get some sleep, I said. There's a race tomorrow. Boots is a long distance call for you at the stable office. Yes? Put him on. Here he is, Mrs. Gibson. Malone? Hello, Mrs. Gibson. Malone, I just want to know one thing. Is Tommy with you? Yes, he's here. Take my advice, Mrs. Gibson. Let him stay just one more day and ride that race. You're insane. Now listen, Malone. Wait a minute, you listen to me. If you ever want this boy, you better find the answer to why he came back here tonight. You proved to him I was a crook, yet he came back. And I'll tell you why. These have been the two happiest months of his life that you had nothing to do with. All right, so what now? So everything. This race is what those two months were for. And if you cheat him out of it, you may be the great Mrs. Gibson, but as a mother, you're blind and stupid. Malone! You'll have him. The question is how. If he goes tonight, it'll take two cops and a pair of handcuffs to keep him on that train. And you'll never have a son as long as you live. My way, you got a chance someday, but you'll have to earn it. Think it over, Mrs. Gibson. You want him tonight? Come and get him. Are you sure you heard Malone right? I wrote it down, white cargo. The horse never won a race in his life. A maiden three-year-old with some kid riding we never heard of. <laughs> What's Malone trying to do? Steal the racetrack? <laughs> What's so funny? Yes, sir. This is Brady. Listen, you know the one I promised you? Goes tomorrow. A mortal lock, Whitehead's three-year-old. Best on the ground. Eddie will be in the saddle. Horse called Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Seventh Tellington. I've got a horse in the seventh. White cargo. White cargo? Somebody's kidding you. The horse don't figure. You sure you know what you're doing? Of course I'm sure. Start betting with both hands. Yeah? Yeah? No, we got all the help we need in the race. Bet the usual for us. Meatloaf. That's more like it. The best horse, the best jockey. Protecting the public again. The favorite wins. Well, it's Meatloaf, isn't it? Yes. Call New York, Miami, Vegas, the whole list. Get us down for the limit. Bet every dime they'll take. Then call the boys, tell them to go with it. And get us on the early plane for Dillington. We can make a four o'clock post. What for? Malone's nobody's patsy. I want to know that horse of his is in the sack. Thirteen, take him away. 
Who you got, Warren? Number five, T. Malone. Okay, take him away. I'm alone. Glad to see you, Matson. I didn't expect you to come. I want to see the seventh. You won't believe it. It's a fairy tale. A man waits all his life for one of these. A 40 to 1 shot and he'll cakewalk it. It's worth a big bet. We're down, aren't we? Yeah, we're down. But not on white cargo. We're betting the favorite, Meatloaf. Meatloaf? What's the matter with you, Matson? I told you what to do. White cargo run all over him. Then white cargo isn't moving today. <laughs> well, he's got to move. Relax. What's the difference? We're betting for you. Go with white cargo next time. There is no next time. What are you talking about? I mean, we... We wound him up for this race. Well, then unwind him. Go two months from now, six months. It'll be the same 40 to 1 shot, won't it? Matson, listen. Property Road chipped in to buy this horse. They've grubbed bucks to bet on him. Their money's in the machines right now. What, fives, tens? Give it back to them. Are you batty or something? There's a fortune on this horse. The whole country's betting. And it's too late to off the bets. Look, do you want to square yourself with me or bury yourself? Now go in there and tell your boy to stiff the horse. If he has to, tell him to fall off. I'll wait for you. We'll watch the race together. How do you feel, kid? Fine. Nervous? About this little race? Put this horse on the lead and never look back. Yeah, that's the idea. Look, Tommy, that was the plan, but uh, I just talked it over with Preacher. We're worried. We think this isn't the right race for the horse. He's overmatched. Overmatched? Yes. So the idea is to save him. If you break on top, take him back. If you're left at the gate, don't press him. Don't try to make up the ground. White Cargo can do it, Boots. Oh, well, maybe he can, but this isn't the race to prove it. If we're not talking about winning, we're talking about what's good for the horse. But they're all betting on them today. So what? Next time they get bigger odds. Now listen to me. This kind of race, the chips are down. The jocks are riding for blood. It's dangerous, so stay out of trouble. Race wide, keep away from the pack. Now is that clear? Is that what you're really worried about, Boots? What do you mean? Because I know all about this race. It's crooked. The money's on the favorite. Eddie Koch is supposed to win. How do you know that? Koch tried to talk to me about helping to shoo him in. What'd you say? I told him to take his business to Macy's. No shenanigans between you and me, Boots. Yeah, of course not. But don't you see, kid, all those jocks, the words out on you, they'll knock you around. I can take care of myself, Boots. That's not the point. It's all the more reason to listen to what I told you. Now, stay back of the pack. But if I break on top and steal a lead and I'm in the clear... How many times do I have to tell you it's a horse we're talking about? And it's orders from Preacher and me. Okay. But, Boots, we don't know if I'm ever going to ride again. And I wanted to win it for you. I know. Maybe I'm no Earl West, but you taught me a lot. And there's one thing Boots always said. In a race, if a boy's worth anything, he can judge the horse under him what he can do. A boy's got it or he hasn't. Tommy. If you'll just believe I've got it, Boots, I promise I'll never hurt the horse. But if I feel I can get him home, you got to leave that to me. you got to trust me, Boots. Okay? Okay. Yeah, I told you a year ago to quit burying your money in tin cans. There it is! I knew I planted one at Dellington. The horses are on the track for the seventh race at one mile and a furlong. Isn't that a good looking horse of mine? Say, how about 
this new kid of yours, Boots? Is he worth a bet? Is he worth a saber? What do you think? Can he ride? He can ride. The horses have reached the starting gate. Preacher, you realize you own two-thirds of a horse running in a feature race of the day? I'm happy for you. Yeah, I'm happy too. But sometimes it bothers me the way I come by him. Ah, Whitehead, he never needed a horse. A guy like you without a horse, you might as well be dead. All right, let's go now. Load him in. All right, boys, let's go now. Hail number six. Get in there now. Hey, Malone. Watch it out there. The ground's pretty hard. Don't get in my way. Watch out, Malone. This horse lugs in. I don't want to hurt you. Come on, Jack. Let's go. No chance. Where'd you ever latch onto this Malone kid? A relative of yours? No relative. Just a coincidence. They flag us up. 40 to 1. It's like roulette, only the numbers run. Bet your money and sleep in the streets. The kid doesn't break in front. He's in for a rough trip. Yeah. <laughs> breaking on top. White Margo in second. And White Margo is getting bumped. Passing the stand for the first time. It's right lean leading by a length. Big giant on the outside is second by a head. White Margo is third by two lengths. Is fourth by a length, and White Cargo between horses is dropping back. It's Big Giant in front by a length. Bright Green is second by a length. Mark West on the inside is third by two lengths. Morocco is fourth by a length. Mito is next. In the house turn, it's Big Giant in front by a length. Bright Green is second by a length. Mark West on the inside is third by two lengths. Zorocco is fourth by a length. Meatloaf is fifth by a half a length. Punchbowl is next. Go on and drop the surprise. Into the back stretch. It's Dick Giant leading by a half a length. Mark West is second by a half. Right team is third by a half a length. Zorocco is fourth by a length and a quarter. Punchbowl is fifth by a half. Turned him loose. It was perfect, kid. <laughs> Everything's perfect. I wish to claim a foul against Malone on white cargo. What happened? In the run through the stretch, that bug rider hit my horse over the head two or three times. I'll hurry in, Tris. 
Meet me in front of the jocks room. Quiet, please. Attention. Hold all tickets. The stewards are inquiring into the running of the race. Inquiry? What's that for? Eddie Koch on Meatloaf has lodged a claim of foul against Team Alone on White Cargo. There will be a slight delay while the stewards view the motion pictures. Foul? Oh, he's a liar. Don't worry about it, Boots. I want it fair. I know I did. Now, don't fret about it. We'll always know you won. We'll even have a picture in the winner's circle to prove it. Now, go on. Weigh in. Weigh in. Run it. This is Kosh on number seven. And this is T. Malone on number five. Approaching the point where foul is claimed. Slow it way down. Koch is squeezing the boy in against the rail. Hold it. Why, the boy's whipping left-handed. He couldn't possibly have fouled Koch. Have Koch report to my office tomorrow at 11. Claim a foul is not allowed. Oh, Mr. Williams. Hello. It's quite an ambitious youngster you've got there. He won it with a clean, hard ride. Before we had the use of motion pictures, I wouldn't have believed what I just saw in there. An apprentice boy outriding Eddie Koch. Switching the whip to his left hand like Earl West in his prime. Congratulations. Glad to see you back in action again. Attention, please. The claim of foul has been refused. The result, as it now appears on the totalizator board, is declared official. Well, I think I'll celebrate. I'm going to pay my rent. Who won that race? Who won that race? Hey, you're wearing blinkers. I'm wearing the winner, number five, White Cargo. <laughs> Best tip he ever gave me, having me phone my mother. I thought she'd be a little hot about my ditching the train last night, but she wasn't at all. She was swell. Asked me all about the race. Couldn't believe I won it. And you know what else? Boots, are you listening? Oh, sure, sure. When I told her you're coming to get me the day school's out, she said she'd be there, too. She wants to talk to you, Boots. Take it easy, Tommy. Your mother and me, it's like oil and water. We don't mix. Ah, oh, don't be a worry, Willie. She'd get to like you. After a while, I know she would. And Boots, it's uh, supposed to be a secret, but I got no secrets from you. She's going to buy a string of racehorses. Boots, is something wrong? Oh, no, no. You weren't listening. We're going to have our own stable. Oh, that's swell. Boots, why don't you hop this train with me? Right now. I couldn't do that. I told you I'd be back to get you. Just as soon as I get a certain matter cleaned up. You won't let me down on that. You'll be there for sure. I told you I would, didn't I? That's a date, pal. Up you go, Jock. Oh, hey, Boots. She isn't gonna like it, but whenever we're together around the track, it's gonna be Team Malone Jr. Whenever we're together, that's great with me. Scram. in the attack room waiting for you with three of his hoods. Tell him I'll be there in a half an hour. Better make it six months. 